Y'all, I'm so dumb. I started talking and everything before I even pressed record, yo. Anyway, um, <laughs> yo, it's my first time back, man, so I got to try to figure everything out. Like, believe it or not, it only took me two days just to get this audio this close to being good. I think we good now, but, hey, it's true what they say, man. If you don't use it, you lose it, you know what I mean? I'm over here feeling like a dummy right now, but. Shit, we got it though. But anyway, let's get into this damn video though, you know what I mean? Let's react. Hey, if you claustrophobic, I ain't gonna lie to you. These videos, man, they activate your claustrophobia from like zero to a hundred, like real quick, you know what I'm saying? So if you're claustrophobic, do not watch this while you're high. Or maybe you don't know if you're claustrophobic or not. But if you're high and you're watching this and you're paying attention, man, listen, it's gonna get to you, you know what I'm saying? Well, anyway, let's, let's react, man. Let's do our thing. This unexplored cave, surrounded by secrecy and speculations, intrigued three men to enter without proper preparation. Little did they know that their curiosity would swiftly turn into an unimaginable nightmare. This is the devastating story of William Coughlin. Before we begin, we need your help. Only 7% of our viewers have subscribed. By subscribing, liking this video, and hitting the bell icon, you can help us create even more great content and keep up with our latest uploads. Your support also helps us reach a wider audience. Without further delay... Hey, y'all, if y'all into these kind of videos, man, y'all go ahead and uh, subscribe to this uh, channel. You see the name right there? I don't feel like doing too much right now, but let's go ahead and... Uh, Subscribe to this man channel, man, you know what I mean? Because they take their time and they put some work into these videos. And like I said, these videos are, they cringing, you know what I'm saying? Well, anyway, subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of stuff. Let's dive into today's video. William Coughlin, a 27-year-old environmentalist from Oak Forest, Illinois, loved the great outdoors. His mother, Marge, often spoke of his special affection for wild animals. Working for the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, William's job reflected his deep desire to protect nature. He spent much of his free time exploring the woods and waterways with his friends, always on the lookout for new adventures. Caving, however, was a recent passion. Introduced to it by a friend, he had once explored a small cave near his home, igniting a fascination with the underground world. Despite their lack of experience and equipment, William and his friends had no trouble navigating that first cave, boosting their confidence to tackle more challenging ones. They had never heard... See, it's, this is my thing, man. Like, what will convince you to go into a cave like that? Just out of curiosity? I mean, I'm not that curious, man. Like, I guess sometimes we all, like, we could be adventurers and stuff like that, but, man, like, going into a dark, a, a dark cave like that, but it's not even like the, the cave being dark, but it's like, it's like a confined space, you know? It's like a real tight, tiny space, man. Like, it's, it's cringing, bro. Many caving accidents, so they assumed nothing could go wrong. Determined to find a cave that would test their limits, William's friend James suggested a trip to Cave City in Kentucky. This unique tourist destination offered both surface level attractions and a labyrinth of underground caves. Among the many caves, Buzzard's Roost Cave stood out in the brochure. <sighs> Let's go back one second, bro. Y'all just saw the that entrance of, of that cave. Caves. Let's see. Among the many you see this entrance? What? in the world would convince you to squeeze yourself in there. It could be animals living in there. It could be a lot of things going on in there, man. Like, why would I just out of plain old curiosity just squeeze myself in this tight ass cave, bro? Like, let's proceed. It's Buzzard's Roost Cave stood out in the brochure for its promise of adventure. The cave was minimally developed and known for its deep drops and tight squeezes, making it clear that this was not a place for beginners. 
William usually stayed close to home, so this adventure was a big step and their first organized caving trip that he was thrilled about. The element of danger was part of the allure. They wanted the thrill of conquering a challenging cave, something they could proudly share with others. On Friday, May 28, 1993, William, James, and Kevin traveled from Illinois to Cave City, arriving on Memorial Day weekend. While hundreds of people flocked to the surface attractions, the trio focused solely on the miles of caves beneath them. In Cave City, they learned about two available tours, the Historic Tour and the Wild Cave Tour. The Historic Tour was a guided walkthrough of accessible parts of the cave, while the Wild Cave Tour promised a more daring experience, requiring crawling, twisting, and squeezing through undeveloped passages. They opted for the Historic Tour first. Before the tour began, they signed a release form, a single document passed among them, warning of the cave's dangers and absolving the operators of liability. Unfamiliar with the risks, they trusted the guide and the operators to keep them safe. William and James were eager to enter the cave, even after learning about the risks. However, their friend Kevin Feely chose to stay above ground, preferring to explore the local attractions. The guy who always chooses to stay above ground is the smart guy, bro. Like, this is crazy, bro. You're doing it for free. You're putting your life on the line for free. They completed the historic tour with guide Dave Harden and then decided to take on the more challenging Wild Cave Tour offered that afternoon. Along with four other participants, they paid the guide to lead them on this daring adventure. Before the tour began, the guide asked everyone to sign another release form, identical to the one they had signed earlier. He handed out two handheld flashlights and instructed them to follow him closely, navigating the cave in the same manner as the person in front. He emphasized the importance of staying together and warned them of the tour's dangers, even showing them the tight tunnels they would crawl through. The guide made it clear that this tour would... Why? Why would you do this to yourself, bro? Why? Be far more dangerous than the historic tour, almost to the point of dissuading them. William and James, brimming with confidence, were undeterred. They had been looking forward to this adventure for months and were not about to turn back. Despite their excitement, the group was surprised by the lack of additional equipment. Seasoned ex Exactly what is the excitement about? It has to be like a adrenaline rush, bro. Like, but what is the excitement about? What is it about? Like, seriously. Tours know that helmets, extra food, water, and at least three light sources are essential for a cave of this difficulty. Yet they pressed on, thrilled by the twists and turns of the passages, adrenaline coursing through their veins. The group navigated to the halfway point without incident, finding the cave less complicated than they had expected. Hungry for more adventure, they hoped the second half would be more challenging. Encouraged by the guide, they began their descent into the lower parts of the cave. After crawling through a narrow passage, they reached a 30-foot hanging cable ladder with wooden rungs. The guide called out instructions as they descended, but the second ladder, shorter at 15 to 20 feet, posed more of a challenge due to its placement over a rocky outcrop. After the group descended the second ladder, the guide announced that the official tour had ended and they were free to explore nearby passages. However, he mentioned they were behind schedule and left them at the bottom of the ladder to make a quick phone call. William, intrigued by a passage he had seen earlier, decided to climb back up the second ladder to explore. James agreed, thinking they might find an unexplored part of the cave. William, tired and frustrated, found the ladder unsteady. Standing six <sighs> feet tall and weighing around 220 pounds, Bro. he struggled. Just those split seconds videos are those really like narrow, narrow spaces. It's like, oh my gosh, why would you do this shit, bro? To grip the rungs, deciding to wait for the guide, he took a break. 
James suggested the other group members look for the guide, who had been gone for a while. Eventually, William decided to give the ladder another shot. As he climbed, his nerves got the better of him, and halfway up, he lost his grip and fell. The fall was brutal. He hit his head on a protruding rock before landing heavily on the cave floor. Blood began to pour from a two-inch gash on his scalp. James, in shock, rushed to help his friend. Despite being conscious, William was delirious and unable to make sense of his surroundings, adding to the group's growing panic. James tried to calm William, assuring him they would get him out safely. When the guide finally returned, he insisted they would need to climb the ladders and exit the way they had come in. But William, badly injured and delirious, was in no condition to climb. The group feared for his life, knowing that every moment spent in the cave reduced his chances of survival. I mean, I'm not sure how they're gonna get him up there. Somebody else is gonna have to come down and help this the other guy. This infuriated James. He argued with the guide, insisting they needed a cave rescue team to get William out. The guide, however, stood firm, telling James that they and the group would have to work together to rescue William. James suspected the guide wanted to avoid causing panic among the many visitors above ground at the attractions. Reluctantly, the group agreed that their only option to get William out was to avoid the ladder and lead him through a narrow corridor marked on the brochures provided by the guide. This passage was never part of the adventure, but had been previously mapped and explored. They pushed and pulled, and to their surprise, they managed to overcome this first major hurdle. The real struggle lay ahead, navigating a narrow, claustrophobia-inducing V-shaped passage. The passage was rough and sharp, making it difficult to get a good grip. Mm. It required a belly crawl. You see that map, bro? Mm. How do you do that to yourself? Look at this. So you gotta go like this. As a human being, you gotta slither like a snake. Bro. It's easy to get stuck, like, right here, man. Like, oh, my gosh. Ugh. Difficult to get a good grip. It required a belly crawl, undulating up and down before taking a decisive turn to the left and downward. William entered the tight passage head first, his large frame barely fitting through. He was nervous about getting stuck, having just squeezed through the first time. Halfway through, William realized he couldn't move any further. Gravity worked against him, and soon he was yelling for help, stuck horizontally with his arm pinned under his body. <laughs> bro, see, bro, I called it, bro. Oh, how you? <clears throat> I don't think I would have went like horizontally in this situation. Bro, I would have went on my on my stomach. <sighs> I don't know. This is crazy. But the more they tried, the more stuck he became. James could not believe the nightmare unfolding before his eyes for the second time. Desperately, he used all his strength to push William out. But this only wedged him further. William's position compressed his diaphragm and lungs, making each breath a physical chore. His breathing grew labored making gurgling sound. The guide told James to go to the surface to get the cave owner and explain the situation. James did, but it became clear that the tour guide and the cave owner wanted to handle the situation without notifying the authorities. Reali bro, people like that get people killed, bro. Oh my gosh, bro. It's out of your hands, bro. Just call the authority, bro. Get as much help as you can, bro. What the hell, bro? This is... Cr Look at this image, bro. Look at... Oh. Don't watch this shit high, y'all. The guide finally left to grab a medical kit and alert the authorities. Three crucial hours passed before medical and rescue personnel arrived. As they waited, onlookers spoke of the 1925 death of Floyd Collins, who had been trapped in a nearby cave drawing huge crowds and media attention. James did his best to comfort William, 
but was scared his friend might die stuck in that crevice. William's responses slowed until he was... My gosh, bro. 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 That's a messed up way, bro. That's a messed up position, bro. Like, bro, that's a tight spot, bro. Ah, bro I can't even move my arms, bro. Like, bro. Nah, somebody slug me. Send one down there. I can't do it. Oh. No longer answering, and James feared the worst. When rescue teams arrived, they worked tirelessly to revive William, confident they could get him out. However, his downward angle made the rescue even more challenging. They used chemical heat blankets and heaters to protect him from hypothermia as the cave's temperature dropped to about 44 degrees Fahrenheit. William's body filled the crevice, making it impossible to access him above his shoulder. The rescuers helped the rest of the group leave the cave, but James stayed with his friend. The rescue crew set up a pulley system to pull William out, but each tug caused him immense pain. He started to moan and groan, but the team didn't give up. They spent all of Saturday trying to free him until, tragically, he was pronounced dead, 17 hours after the rescuers arrived. It took another seven hours to remove William's body using ladders and... <sighs> oh, man. Bro. That's a slow, painful agonizing way to go bro that's messed up bro but who can we blame bro oh. never let your curiosity get the best of you like this man ever they brought him out at 2 30 p.m on monday nearly three days after he had first entered the cave. Mike Swift, the Barron County coroner, said William died of compressive and positional asphyxia with a contusion on his head contributing. The 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals found that the cave attraction owner had been aware of the risks but did not adequately warn the participants. As a result, William's family was awarded damages for the tragedy, recognizing that the waivers he signed were more an incitement than a warning of specific risks. Damn, y'all. I told you this video will make you cringe. Like, listen, man. You're not claustrophobic. I'm pretty sure I gave you your warning already. Um, but anyway, like I said, I'm just messing around with this video right now. I'm trying to get my audio and things right, so... We're going to see how this one turn out, man. But uh, until next time, man, if you're new, go ahead and subscribe, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll be back.